Okay, today is the day from rural Horry County, South Carolina. Today is the day that I get to start building the pump house, or I should say the well house, or dog house, depending on how you look at it. So here's the well right here, and the pressure tank. And so what I want to accomplish is I want to build a basically a four foot by four foot structure to cover this to keep it out of the elements because even though it's not really warm right now it's getting kind of hot did survive Ian last week but I don't want to test my luck too much here's all my building material and I had a meeting in North Myrtle Beach today so I just went to Home Depot there and got everything that we need hopefully in order to build this and so it's kind of late in the afternoon right now so I'll probably start the actual build in the morning okay here's the model that I did of what the well house hopefully is going to look like uh, both Andre and I have degrees in architecture and uh, we have our own business and we do architectural design houses and light commercial and we also help um, architects with bigger projects. So this is actually from the program that we use to do our architectural drawings with. Okay, as you can see here, here's my simulated version of the well and the pressure tank. And the first thing I want to do is I want to place some blocks down at the bottom. These are just brick pavers because I didn't want it to be on the ground itself. Then uh, I'm going to build the floor and the framing. And then once I get done with the framing, then build the rafters. Then once I get to this point... Then I'm going to stop and put in the anchors in the ground. And I'll cover that more when I get to it. These are the same kind of anchors that held down our tent uh, last week during Hurricane Ian. So I figured if it could hold down a tent, which is a lot bigger and a lot lighter than this, it could hold this down no problem. Then after the anchors are in, then I want to put the siding on and then I on the overhangs on the side I just want to put a 2 by 4 just to have a little bit and then I want to put a what they call a subfascia on the top and the bottom then I want to put the actual finish fascia and then lastly put the roof on Alright, looking at a different angle, it looks like this. Uh, the shingles are just represented as just textures. But this will be a shingle roof, the same color as the shingles on our house. And the color that we're going to have on the well house itself is going to be similar to probably the color that you see right here. A light gray. We don't want it to be the same gray as the house, uh, actually a little bit lighter. Okay, it is the next morning, and it's a beautiful morning. There's a little bit of breeze, not too hot. Looks like we might have a little bit of cloud cover, which is not the worst thing in the world. So, I got everything set up, and... The OSB piece here, which is going to be my roof at some point, is going to be one of the last things. So I just put it up on the sawhorses, and it's going to be my de facto building table. So that'll be good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build the base. And then I will set the base around to get a layout of what it's actually going to look like around the pump and the... Uh, pressure tank itself and then we will take it from there okay the base 
is cut and set. All I have, I mitered the edges and all I have is just one screw on each side. So that's not the most stable in the world. But what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna use some of my scrap when I start building the walls and put a, a 45 degree thing here, which is gonna help me in two ways. It's gonna help with the anchors and it's gonna help brace the base. So, ended up, I put these blocks here. These blocks are like a pseudo foundation. Uh, I just wanna make, I just wanna have them there, just make sure it's level. The anchors are what's gonna hold the structure down, not this. This is not a traditional foundation by any means. So, I call that phase one complete. All right, now on to phase two. This is gonna be the walls. Now these walls are gonna be extremely unstable until they're all put together. Like in a normal house, you have to have bracing until you can at least get the sheathing up. The sheathing in a normal house, which is typically OSB, which is what this is, uh, not only helps uh, keep an area to where you can put your siding or brick or whatever you want to put on the outside of the house but more importantly it also acts as a structural component to keep everything from sliding around laterally or a, in a shear mode so we're going to start on the walls now the back here is going to have a total height from the bottom of that wood up to the top of three feet the front is going to have uh, up to four feet and so then I can have a, a 3 and 12 slope for my roof. 3 and 12 is the minimum that you need for shingles. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I have the anchors in over here. Let's see where you can see them. So the anchors, the four anchors are in the ground. I was concerned about this one over here because it was kind of in concrete. But that was a splash off. All I had to do was just smack it with my sledgehammer and it just crumbled. So it was only just on the surface. So I got all four anchors in. I was able to get enough scrap that this is upside down. But now I know that my base is plumb on all four sides. So it's square. And... So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna build the walls and everything without it getting too ridiculous. So one of the good things about doing stuff like this, at least for me, is figuring out how to do stuff. So now I gotta figure it out, which will be fun. What I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna build the front wall and the back wall, put the sheathing on over on the table over here and then I'll turn around and figure out a way to, because I want to attach the base of the walls to the bottom of this. And the bottom right now is on the ground. And if I tried to um, just leave it free form, it's going to just wobble and collapse. It, it'll be that unstable so I'll figure it out and then as soon as I do I'll let you know all right after some distractions and a bunch of gnats I got the front and back walls done so they're standing up right now so that's what it looks like from the front this is rough sawn t111 so it would not be really good for a house construction, but something this small, it will be fine. Uh, we have paint for it, which of course will be one of the last steps. So I'm gonna go take a break now and figure out how to set these up, get the rafters up and cut, so then this thing won't fall over as soon as I put it in. So, like I said, I love the figuring out aspect of the build, so that's what I'm going to go do right now. 
Okay, after a lot of thinking and a little bit of trial and error, we got the structure up. What I did is I ended up turning it on its side so I could get in the front and the back piece on. Then had Andrea come out here and help me get the rafters up. Then once I got the rafters up, I was able to secure it. So then I could get the two sides up. The side pieces are mainly to support the sheathing. That's not really structural. So I just toenailed those in. Uh, after we set it up, I put the anchors, or I should say connected the anchors with the wires. So they're in there now. The anchors are directly below where the blocking is located. So if this thing does decide to move, it's not going to move very much. And like Andrea said, if it actually moves it to the point to where it's going to like fling it, there's going to be like a tornado or something like that. And then we'll have a lot more problems to deal with. So this is where I am right now. Originally I was going to stop once I got the rafters on, but I'm on kind of a roll. So I'm going to, my goal is today is to get the roof sheathing on. So we'll see if I get that far because I still have a lot of work to do, but that's where I am right now. Okay, this is going to be the end of the first day. It's not where I wanted to end, but A, it's getting late, and B, I ran out of screws. So by the time I would go get some, it would be dark. So where I ended up is going to the back here. I have the final fascia board on the sides here. These are one by sixes. And that's why I ran out of the screws, but I have them on both sides. I have the rafters up. I have the subfascia on the top and bottom done. And I don't have the door on, but the door will be one of the last things done. So that's what it looks like as of now. And... We'll be putting, I'll be putting this same fascia piece on the front in the morning. So here's from the top view. This will be structural. So you should theoretically be able to stand on it. And I might or might not try that. I don't know yet. This is what it looks like from the inside. And so... You can see where the four anchor parts are. Looks like I can be able to get to those if I need to, although it won't be fun, but there should be enough room to shimmy around in there. So this is the end of day one. Honestly, this is a lot farther than I thought I was gonna get in one day. So tomorrow, what we gotta do, other than get screws, is Need to get, I gotta put the fascia piece on the front and back. I gotta put the OSB on for the roof. Then put the shingles on. Well, I should say, gotta put the felt paper and the drip edge, which is down here. Then I gotta put the shingles on. And then we gotta paint it. We will probably not be painting tomorrow. Oh, and also the door. Yeah. Can't forget, got to put the doors on. So, that's where we are. And so, I will catch back in the morning. Okay, day two of the build. It's in the morning now. Probably about, I don't know, 8.30 or so. It's nice and brisk out here. It's not a cloud in the sky. Little bit of breeze. So it's perfect temperature. Uh, got the thinking overnight and instead I think I'm going to put my front and back fascias on then put the OSB on top. Then I'm going to paint first. Then I'm going to put the shingles on after because the shingles I want to overlap a little bit on all sides 
and it'll be a lot harder to paint once they're up. So I figure I'll just do it now. Considering the conditions we have, the paint should not take that long to dry. So worst case scenario, I take a break for a little bit and then put the shingles on. Plus, I've never installed shingles before, so this ought to be interesting. Okay, we got the sheathing on and we ended up with a little issue. Uh, the building is, or at least the roof part of the building, is not necessarily square, it's more of a parallelogram of sorts. So, this is what it looks like on this side. And this is what it looks like on this side. And it's the same at the top also. So, I was going to do the masculine thing and just do it and let Andrea figure it out. But I figure I'd do the honorable thing, so I got her involved. And what we agreed to was we're going to have the roof itself be square like it's supposed to. So we're just going to have these overhangs. By the time we put the shingles and the drip edge and everything on it, it'll sh hopefully it'll be less visible. It'll probably still annoy me, but I don't think it will really, anybody will really notice it. But doing the shingles, I thought it was more important to make sure we had a actual square roof to deal with, considering I've never done shingles before. So, hit a little snag, now we're getting ready to paint. But if this is the only problem we have on this build, I'll call it a win. Okay, we have it painted. And we think we're going to put a second coat on the doors, which are sitting over at the saw horses. But this rough sawn uh, T111 just freaking soaked up the paint. This little bit here took an entire gallon. And in a gallon of paint normally does 400 square feet. And I can tell you right now, this is nowhere close to 400 square feet. And it took almost the entire gallon. What we're thinking about doing is doing another coat here. But we're going to let it sit. We're going to let it dry for a little bit. We're going to take a break. And then we're going to start tackling the roof, which will be fun. Okay, back at it again. Just installed the drip edge. So I got the drip edge on the bottom, and I don't know if it needs it or not, but I don't think it would, but we went ahead and got one on the top too. So the drip edge is now done. So now I'm getting ready to do the felt paper. All right, underlayment is on. I have a little overhang at the bottom, nice overhang in the center where they overlap and a little bit of overhang at the top. I went ahead and put a couple of nails down. There's virtually no wind, but knowing the law of construction, the second I would start, then the wind would pick up and blow it away. So I just put a couple of nails down to keep it in place. And let me spin around. If you look over, that's how much of the roll I used. So it looks like the shed we're going to be building, hopefully in the next few weeks, is going to use the rest of this. I don't think we'll use all of it on that shed. Let's hope not. Alright, it is done. Took a lot longer than we thought. And learned something about shingles. Just because it says 33 square feet doesn't mean it's actually 33 square feet. People that have installed roofs before by saying duh, but never done shingles before, so we had to go back to Home Depot to get more shingles. So now for the ultimate test to see whether or not it's actually sturdy. Alright, I call that pretty sturdy. So well house is done took all weekend but I think it's worth it and 
supposed to be getting rain in a few days, so we'll see how it actually works.